Yo, what's up? We're back, and this week it's for a little bit of a different video. And I tried to put up a video already this week, guys. With um, it was a like a it was a career progress or like year in review for Ben Askren. So they wouldn't allow me to put that on um, YouTube. So please go check out my Instagram, check that video, tell me what you think. I do have a couple more of those also that I have finished already. So you know, if you do like that one video, then I could do or I could slowly release the other ones as well. But um, for this week's um, video, which is going to be a little bit different, I'm going to be doing a kind of like a, not a study I would say, but just kind of like um, I did a little bit of research on Dana White Contender Series fighters in their debuts. Just because I was looking at this card here, this next card that we have coming up, and there's a lot of Dana White Contender Series fighters on there. I mean, Billy Quarantino, or Quarantillo, he's making his UFC debut. We have um, Ricky Simone, Marina Rodriguez was on... Um, Tough Brazil, Matt Sales, Joe Selecki, another guy making his Dana White or his UFC debut off the Dana White Tenor Series. So, you know, just seeing all those Dana White Tenor Series guys infiltrating this card, infiltrating the UFC, kind of just gave me this idea where, you know, I did um the 2018-2019 here, every single winner from the Dana White Tenor Series here. And um, I kind of just did some research on how they did in their UFC debuts where... Just to see, you know, um, a lot of people uh, don't trust the Dana White Tender Series fighters off the debuts. A lot of people, you know, ride the Dana White Tender Series fighters off the debuts. So it's a little bit of, um, you know, uh, a contested thing that some people don't trust them, some people do. But when I was going through the research here, I do feel like, um, you know, if you look at this versus regular people debuting into the UFC, they have a much, much, much higher win percentage. They have had... Um, 35 fighters from the Dana White, this is just 2018 and 2019, the U.S. one, so this doesn't include Brazil or the first season, but they have had um, 35 fighters compete on that on the um, cards for the UFC, and they actually have 22 and 13, so they've won almost 63% of the fights, and they've been favorites in 26 of the 35 fights, so 70... 5% of the time, 74% of the time, they're the favorite. So obviously, you know, if, if you're a favorite almost three-fourths of the time entering the UFC, they obviously want you to win a fight. So the Dana White Tender Series guys are getting favorable matchups in their debut, and they're delivering. You know, the favorites have won 76% of the time. And um, if you break it down by uh, division, Every single division has gotten a fighter on the Dana White Contender Series has been added except for women's 145. That's the only division that hasn't added a fighter through the Dana White Contender Series. And uh, for heavyweights, they're 1-3, and three, so not a very good record in their debuts. They did have Greg Hardy who had the um, disqualification in his debut, so that was a little bit of a weird situation there. But they also had Jeff Hughes who he lost as well in his debut. And, um, you know, I think I can't remember everyone that's lost, but yeah, so they're one and three for light heavyweight. They're four and two. So light heavyweight, they have six guys that they've picked up from there that and featherweight are their two most, um, the six is the highest amount of fighters that they've picked up. So the light heavyweight division is a popular division in terms of uh, getting acquisitions on the Dana White contender series. And they have a pretty good record in their debuts at four and two. Middleweight, three and two. So um, they also have a lot of guys that are getting picked out through the Dana White contender series. They obviously have uh, Edmund Shabazian, who's turned into be one of the best prospects uh, from the show, obviously. And um, so middleweight did get some nice blood from the from the show as well. Welterweight, they're two and one in welterweight. Um, you know, so welterweight, uh, Punahali Soriano still has to, or he's a middleweight actually, but there's a couple welterweights that haven't debuted as well that I feel like could potentially be pretty good in the UFC, but Miguel Baeza, he's, um, you know, he had a good win in his debut, and um, yeah, so that's it for the welterweights there. I know they have Peter, or Phil, Phil Rowe, who's uh, good friends with Mike Perry, he trains over there with the Black Zillions, he's going to be a... Uh, Welterweight debuting featherweight four and two for featherweight, which is a fairly good record as well. That's the other group of six and um, bantamweight one and one. So they haven't picked up many bantamweights. Only two, only uh, two guys that they picked up at bantamweight have fought in the UFC so far: Miles Johns and Domingo Pilarte. 
and flyweight. They've only picked up one flyweight male throughout the whole show, which is Jordan Espinoza. And um, he actually did get the win as an underdog. One of the few Dana White Contender Series guys that actually did go in there and get the win when they were the underdog in the debut. But um, for women's, uh, 135, they have 1-0. and Tracy Cortez just went in there and picked up the win over Vanessa Mello. And uh, for women's 125, Antonina Shevchenko, she did win her UFC debut. And then for 115, Macy Barber won her UFC debut at 115. So women coming off the Dana White Contender Series are actually 3-0 and on the um, you know, in the UFC, so uh, Sarah Alpar is the only other woman that hasn't um, debuted yet in the UFC. But when you see that they're three and zero, maybe they're gonna try to give uh, Alpar a good, um, solid debut as well. And there has been a few guys that haven't debuted yet that, um, you know, they could have some pretty good potential. You know, like Phil Rowe, Tony Gravely. He's set to debut against Brett Johns, so that's a huge first fight to have. Uh, Herbert Burns, the brother of Gilbert Burns, Omar Morales, he had a big win on the show over a LFA champion, Alon Cruz, he had that big um, flying knee win, and then we do have two guys that are debuting on the next card from the Dana White Contender Series, and um, that's going to be Joseph Selecki, who's a major favorite, I actually think Joseph Selecki has a very high likelihood of winning this fight. And then we have the contrast here with Billy Quarantillo, who's actually an underdog going into his fight. But, you know, I actually do think Billy is a live underdog. I think that he could get the win there. But, um, yeah, so that's the um, a couple statistics for you guys for the Dana White Contender Series, how the Dana White Contender Series guys have been doing. So, overall, I would say what we learned from here is that they've been winning at a uh, very high rate, especially the favorites, 63%. That's pretty good. And, um... Yeah, so uh, it seems like it's actually maybe a good idea to uh, bet on these Dana White Tennis Series guys if you think they have an edge because they actually have been going out there and getting it done. And I do think that, you know, it does take away a lot of jitters when you can go on that show, see Dana White, see like 50 people, it's dead quiet in there versus when you have your first UFC fight, it's usually early on the card. There's probably a similar amount of people there that they were, you know, when you were fighting on the regional scene. And um, you don't have that same pressure of you have to win. You have to win spectacularly to get into the UFC. You're already in the UFC. All you have to do is get the victory, get the win, and that's all that matters. So, yeah, that's the uh, that's just a little video that I gave for you guys, uh, just some content over this break. And like I said, please go check out that uh, Ben Askren year in review. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you want me to release the other ones. And uh, maybe the other ones will let me release them on YouTube because they don't have nearly as much uh, footage as the Ben Askren one. But yeah, so uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for checking this video out. And make sure to uh, comment, like, subscribe. I will be back for the uh, December 7th. Uh, card and the December 14th card to round out the year and I do think I'm going to be putting out uh, a few other videos besides the prediction videos so be on the lookout for those as well and uh, thanks guys thanks for always watching thanks for always supporting the channel